Here's a fun fact for you. If the benefits of exercise could be put in a pill, it would be the greatest blockbuster medication of all time. When it comes to improving your health and overall quality of life, there is literally nothing better you can do than to be as physically strong as humanly possible. And you do that through exercise. So exercise is awesome. But what if for some reason you can't work out? Are you forever doomed in a life of despair? Nope, not if you do what I'm about to tell you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to lose weight without exercise. These are the exact same tips that I give to all my students and they've all gone to see some amazing results. So you know it works. Before we get started, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. Okay, here's something that I wanna make very clear. I just wanna get ahead of this. If you're able to work out, you should. If you wanna maintain and build muscle, have that tight and toned look, fit better into your clothes, and just be a healthy and happy human being, you need to exercise if you can. Like if you wanna lose weight without exercise just because you're lazy, you are looking at this completely the wrong way. Like I want you to think of exercise like brushing your teeth. You should do some form of it every day. And I'm not saying that you should go to the gym every day, seven days a week. No, I don't even do that and I'm a gym rat. What I'm trying to say here is that there are many different forms of exercise like lifting weights, running, cycling, swimming, and other cool stuff like play. Your goal is to try as many different modalities as possible. Now, a lot of people think of exercise as a tool to build muscle, and that's one of its main benefits, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with having that as your goal when you exercise, but it's so much more than that. Other benefits include improved insulin sensitivity, reduced stress, improved brain health, reduced risk of chronic disease, enhanced detoxification, and improved sexual function. It slows down the aging process by improving your mitochondrial efficiency, just to name a few. It basically helps you become a more functional human being. And I say that because exercise is so important in the aging process. Again, this just circles back to having quality of life and longevity, especially as you get older. Like when you're younger, you're not gonna see the biggest difference here. Like I know a lot of people who don't exercise and they're fine, but you you can't do that forever. As you age, and the average North American here gains one and a half pounds of fat and loses half a pound of muscle starting at the age of 25 up until 55. This is why you see people start to pack the weight starting in their mid 20s and they don't know how to reverse it. But you don't need to be part of that statistic because building and maintaining muscle mass through exercise is the key driver of your metabolism. You want to keep your metabolism running efficiently at all times. It also greatly improves bone density and bone strength, which helps you maintain your independence longer. Like think about your typical elderly person. They're frail, they're very slow. It's hard for them to take care of themselves. But it doesn't have to be like that. That, like even something as simple as walking regularly has been shown to reduce your risk of getting dementia by 40%. And when you look at the exceptions here, you look at those few elderly people who still take care of themselves. And I've used him many times as my example, but Mark Sisson is the perfect example of this. He's the author of some of my favorite fitness books. And that's where I got the stat about dementia. He's 66 years old and he looks like that. You don't end up looking like that without exercise. Having said all of that, there might be certain times where you just can't exercise. Like if you have an injury, for example. A few years ago, I broke my back from training when I was a full-time athlete. This is actually the video where I broke my back. When I caught that lift at the bottom, something called a pars fracture happened. And I knew right away that something bad happened. You can see me grab my lower back. Or maybe you're sick and you can't work out. Just to continue my broken back story, I actually developed pneumonia a few days after. Talk about a double whammy, right? Like just when you think things couldn't get worse. I honestly think that my immune system just shut down because I was so depressed from breaking my back. So when you're sick, exercise can actually slow down your healing process because exercise is a type of stress. It's a good type of stressor in your body if you're healthy. But if you're not healthy, if your body is trying to fight off an infection, for example, like pneumonia, exercise will just add unnecessary stress that could potentially make things worse. And when you're sick, exercise should be the last thing on your mind anyway. Your goal should be just to get healthy. And when you're just starting out your weight loss journey, not worrying too much about exercise might not be the worst thing. Because there are levels to this. Like if you just focus on the minimum effective dose of setting a goal of getting 10,000 steps every day, like just do that for the first couple of weeks and just build from there and instead focus on higher leverage pillars, you're gonna be way better off in the long run because 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet while the other 20% is achieved by making supportive lifestyle choices that upregulate your fat burning metabolism. And that includes 
exercise. It actually only falls in the 20% category. And we'll talk about the rest of those supportive lifestyle choices, or as I like to call them, pillars of health in a second here. The problem is a lot of well-meaning people start their weight loss journey by focusing too much on exercise. They think it's a 50-50 split with nutrition. No, it's good for you, but it only plays a supporting role when it comes to weight loss. So you're going to get a way better ROI if you just focus on your diet. And that's exactly how one of my students was able to drop 25 pounds and six dress sizes in eight weeks without exercise. She just focused on her diet when she started because she couldn't work out because she was dealing with some injuries. And once she was fully healed from those injuries, then she started working out. My point here is that sometimes you can't work out because you're injured or you're sick or both just like me. That's fine. You can still lose weight or at the very least maintain your results so you don't start trending the wrong way. But once you're back to good health, you need to focus on adding exercise if and when you can. Because without it, it's actually way harder to reduce your overall body fat percentage. If you don't work out because you're just lazy, the weight that you're going to lose will come from both fat and muscle. Because again, exercise is how you maintain and build muscle. It's that use it or lose it concept. So if you don't work out and you keep losing fat and muscle, then that's how you get that skinny fat look. It's not a good look. Having said all of that, how do you actually do it? How do you still lose weight without exercise? Well, let's look at it this way. There are five pillars of health, sleep, nutrition, exercise, stress, and your mindset. If you get rid of one of those pillars, that places more load on the rest of the pillars. And I'm a big fan of the 90-10 rule here. So 90% of the time, be good, while the other 10% live your best life. But if you get rid of exercise, then you're gonna need to improve on that 90% score for the rest of the pillars. So let's talk about each one starting with stress. If you're not on point with managing your stress and exercise is an unbelievably powerful way of managing your stress levels because your body releases endorphins afterwards, that's your feel good hormone, by the way. So if you take that out, you're going to need to find other ways to better manage your stress levels. And I talk about that in further detail in this video. Let's talk about sleep. If you're already struggling with your sleep, like if you already just get five hours of sleep every night and that's not ideal already, and then when you take exercise out of the equation and all of its amazing benefits, then the negative effects of that lack of sleep is just gonna keep compounding and weight loss will start to become the least of your concerns. Let's talk about nutrition and mindset because they kind of go hand in hand here. Like as if your diet wasn't important enough to begin with, but it basically becomes your focal point if you want any chance of losing weight without exercise because you're going to have a lot less wiggle room and you're going to be able to get away with less without exercise. For example, when you have a cheat meal, one of the best ways to violently recalibrate your hunger hormones to quickly bounce back from it is by doing intermittent fasting the next day, preferably a 16 hour fast or feel free to extend it if you can. The longer you go, the better. Like if you can just eat one meal the next day, that's great. And then you want to combine that fast with an intense workout to empty out your muscle glycogen stores. But if you take exercise out of that equation, then you might have to go from being able to have an optional cheat meal every week to once every two weeks if that. And when it comes to your daily diet, it becomes very important that you put even more emphasis on eating single ingredient, mostly in process, nutrient dense foods. In terms of your macros, it becomes paramount that you focus on a setup that moderates your insulin levels. I mean, that should be your goal all the time anyway. Like if you like carbs, for example, the best time to eat carbs is after a hard lifting session or a really intense workout or both, because that is when you're the most insulin sensitive and the carbs that you eat will be used to replenish your muscle glycogen stores. But you can't get away with that without exercise. So you're going to want to limit your carb intake even more because it no longer serves a purpose. Your body instead can just run on fat for energy. And that's exactly what you want if you want any chance of losing weight without exercise. And I haven't said this in a while. So if you're new to my channel, listen up. There are essential fats and protein. And by essential, that means your body can't create it, but you need it to survive. Otherwise you would die or you would become very unhealthy and then you end up dying anyway. Essential fats are based on linoleic and alpha linoleic acid like EPA and DHA. You need both of those essential fatty acids to survive. There are essential protein like amino acids, which is the building block of life. It's what your body uses to repair and build muscle. However, there are no essential carbs. Zero. Look it up. Carbs are not required for human survival, even though they're delicious. Anybody who tells you otherwise probably hasn't read a book since high school. If you're giving that person money for nutrition advice, you should ask for your money back and start running the opposite way because your body's an amazing thing and it can create all the glucose that it needs for survival 
through a process called gluconeogenesis. Take a deep breath if that was breaking news to you. Having said all of that, your macros ratio needs to be high fat, moderate protein, and very low carb if you want to lose weight without exercise and actually maintain your results. It's usually the macros ratio that I recommend anyway because it's the best ratio to moderate your insulin levels. You become a fat burner this way. And fats and protein are delicious. Who doesn't like eating steak, eggs, bacon, avocado, and have nuts, cheese, and dark chocolate as your treat. Fats and protein are also extremely satiating, so they activate your satiety hormones, turn off your hunger hormones, and moderate your insulin levels. That sounds like a great recipe for weight loss to me. In layman's terms, it turns you into a fat burner while keeping you full longer. Now, you can definitely do this by eating intuitively and eating all the foods that I mentioned in this video. But if you want full control of your diet, and this is definitely a good idea, especially if you're not able to work out, is to track your macros. Because you can adjust your activity level on MyFitnessPal or whatever calorie counting app you're using, and it'll give you a lower number that you're then gonna work with. Knowing your exact numbers is also crucial just to make sure that you're getting enough protein and your carb count doesn't get out of control. And by very low carb, I mean 50 grams or less. That almost guarantees to put you in a state of ketosis. That's when you become a fat burner. You also want to get 0.7 grams per pound of lean body mass for protein. And doing it this way also helps ensure that you stay on a calorie deficit. It just honestly helps. Now I want to quickly address that because I've said this many times in my other videos. A calorie deficit will only work, and I mean long-term sustainable results, if you optimize your hormones for fat loss, if you're metabolically flexible, if you're fat adapted, basically if you follow everything that I've mentioned so far in this video. If you can't work out for 30 days, for example, and you're worried about losing your precious muscles, don't. As long as you get adequate protein, then you're gonna be okay. If you don't, then that's when you start to atrophy. Because just as hard as it is to put on muscle, it's also hard to lose it. Again, just make sure you're eating enough protein. But losing weight without exercise is definitely doable, especially if it's just a few weeks, because again, 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet anyway. Is it ideal to lose weight this way? No. Is it possible? Yeah. The middle ground here, honestly, is if you're dealing with an injury, for example, like if you have a hamstring injury, you can still do upper body workouts. If you're dealing with a shoulder injury, you can still do lower body workouts. Just do what you can. Do what your body allows you to do. Some is better than none in this scenario. Just remember that we evolved to move as human beings. Otherwise, you'd be a tree. My biggest recommendation here is to just focus on your health First, that should be your number one priority anyway. Funny enough, the best medicine is food. Eat the good stuff. Like nourishing your body with the best quality food you can afford is one of the best forms of self-love, in my opinion. And once you're healthy, then you can start working out again. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because here's the thing, 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I want to give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach without depriving myself of my favorite foods or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it type in your email and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And hey, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. First, a high five.